Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck and Coney. I have a special guest today who's written this book, Iran Covenant, Chet Nagel. Chet, thank you for coming here. I'm delighted to be here. Well, this book, and you can explain it a little more, you're talking about uh, the United States and Israel getting together to punish Iran for its nuclear power development and, and nuclear bombs. It sounds strangely like what's going on today. Well, uh, of course, it is based on, it's a novel, mm -hmm. uh, but it is based on fact and my own experience in the Middle East. And I think it is very timely. Uh, it's one of the reasons it was rushed into print because, not because I'm prescient, but because I could sense that the things were moving in this direction. And it is, the title Covenant implies a, a deal, but since it's the Holy Land, we'll use a nice word like covenant right. between the U.S. Uh, and Israel to stop the Iranian uh, nuclear development program. Well, this is the thing that's going on right now. I mean, that, a prescient is a good word. I mean, maybe you weren't prescient, but you really, you spent a great deal of time in that area, didn't you? So you have quite a bit of an understanding. Yes, uh, I spent a lot of time there, a lot of time in Iran, uh, up until the time of the uh, departure of the Shah. And so I know the country pretty well, but I've studied it extensively too. And I spent a lot of time in the Gulf and just about every country you could imagine in the in the Gulf. Yes, I've had a lot of experience. You were in that sort of secret world, weren't you? The world of spies and that, though. And you did you did you work for the agency? Yes, I did. Uh, um, and uh, I the worked. The CIA. I, yes. I, uh, <laughs> I worked for a, a wonderful man named Jim Critchfield, who's dead now, and he and I. Uh, are the only two holders of the Order of Oman, that nation's uh, highest order, because of the services there that we performed while they were having a war with the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen next door, which uh, they won. Well, you understand the complications of dealing in the Islamic world where they hate us so much. I mean, our president, uh, President Obama, is out there trying the role of diplomacy and talking to the, in Egypt, delivering a special speech. Do you think it's going to make any difference to the way the situation is there? Well, you can't be homogenous about the about the people in the Middle East. Uh, you know, Persians are not Arabs, mm -hmm. and there's Sunnis and Shia, and then you've got Muslims in Indonesia. So the world of Islam will view whatever he says there uh, differently. Uh, the great American expression is, all politics are local. So whatever he says will be viewed in local light. Um, there's a, a completely different situation, for example, in Egypt than there is in, in Iran. So his uh, reaching out, which has been rebuffed so far by just about everybody, certainly the Iranians and the North Koreans, uh, doesn't mean he should stop doing that. But on the other hand, he has to add some other spices to the mix. But it's perceived throughout the world. I realize there's the major difference that the, the United States is having war on Islam. Now, the premise of your novel, basically, is having Israel, the hated Israel, and the United States, and the United States, of course, is hated because it is so close to Israel, actually coming in and bombing Iran to stop this nuclear development. Now, wouldn't that cause an incredible increase in the hatred of the United States? Well, uh, you used the, the phrase very briefly, uh, war with Islam. Uh, I think the president is correct when he says the United States is not at war with Islam. Uh, on the other hand, it certainly would seem that Islam is at war with us. Uh, certainly, uh, the trade towers and other events tell us that these are Islamic terrorists uh, who are doing these things. So the president, the, it's, it's not wrong for the president to, to say we're at peace here and, and try and reach an accord of some kind. Uh, I think, however, there is a missing element here. And the missing element is force. It doesn't mean you have to use it right away, but you can't take it off the table. You have to make it clear that this is not an open-ended discussion forever because that looks weak in the eyes of an Islamist. And it, but, if you do it, though, I mean, I, I hate to keep circling back. If you do it, what happens to our, not only in the Islamic world, but China, Russia, I think actually some of our closest allies would be upset, and we would kind of almost find ourselves out there alone. In the case of our closest allies, or even the ones who aren't our closest allies, mm -hmm. let's take a look at the Middle East. Right now, there's an arms race underway, mm -hmm. a nuclear arms race underway, which has been caused by Iran's nuclear program. Thirteen countries at last count, probably a lot more 
uh, Egypt, uh, the entire UAE, um, Morocco, all these countries have, are seriously building nuclear programs. Some of them may ask us for help, mm -hmm. oddly enough. Uh, and it's, they're going to Pakistan, which is a logical place to go buy this sure. stuff. The arms race is underway. The age of non-proliferation is over. No matter what the president says, no matter what treaties are signed, the, the radioactive monster is out of the bottle and you can't get it back in. If we are strong and if we demonstrate, and the fear of course of all these countries in the Middle East is they are Sunnis and the Iranians are Shia and they're scared to death of these guys. That's what they're really afraid of. Now publicly they'll castigate us. If we or the Israelis used say EMP weapons on Iran, didn't kill a lot of people but knocked out their program. Uh, publicly it would be a hell of an uproar. Privately they'd say thank God because they really don't want these guys to have the bomb. The Russians would do the same and perhaps the Chinese too. The Chinese would come in and offer to rebuild the place. Is that why you wrote this book? Yes. That's Look. a very quick answer. <laughs> the, Elaborate just a little because we just well, have a couple moments yet. Yeah. Well, the, the, the book is a novel, of course, and it's uh -huh. a thriller and it's designed to entertain. And I'm told that it's a rattling good tale and there are 20 readers. It is. It is. And the reader interviews, uh, reviews on Amazon indicate that it's a lot of fun. But there is a message wrapped up in the, in the story. And the message is, first of all, if, the United, if Israel attacks Iran, whatever means, we'll get blamed. Uh, if we attack Iran, we'll get blamed. So that's a kind of a pretty yeah. similar situation there. I, I think, and I build a case for it here, which is fictional, of course, uh, and a, a direct insult, uh, nuclear insult to Israel, that uh, an existential insult, and they have to respond to that, which they will do. They will, sure, they to, will. The, to them today, Iran is an existential issue. To mm -hmm. us, it's... There are trial balloons saying perhaps we can live with a nuclear Iran. I don't believe we can. Right, tell me quickly before we sign off, where can we get your book? Uh, you can go to Amazon.com mm -hmm. and just, or you can go to Google and Google Iran Covenant and see what the world is saying. There's a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff. Okay. Or you can go to my website, which is www.iranCovenant.com, and I'll send you an autograph copy. Okay. Chet Nagel, thank you for being here with me. Thank you very much. I'm Chuck Kincone, and this has been Focus Washington.